Hello and welcome to our Bible study of First Kings and today we are in chapter 7 which is a juicy one. It's quite a long one, there's 51 verses so we better get started. But Solomon was building his own house 13 years and he finished all his house. So from the research I did yesterday by the way, so chapter 6 was him working on the temple and I said that I wanted a visual. I did find one, I found a really great video that I linked in the description of the chapter 6 video if you want to have a look in there. It's really really good, it gives you all the background, it shows a model of what it looked like, fantastic. And it showed that he would build his house next to the temple as well. So check that out, it's really good. So anyway, he built his house 13 years later. He built also the house of the forest of Lebanon. The length thereof was a hundred cubits, and the breadth thereof fifty cubits, and the height thereof thirty cubits, upon four rows of cedar pillars, with cedar beams upon the pillars. And it was covered with cedar above upon the beams, that lay on forty-five pillars, fifteen in a row. And there were windows in three rows, and light was against the, while light was against light in three ranks. And all the doors and posts were square, with the windows, and light was against light in three ranks. And he made a porch of pillars, the length thereof was fifty cubits, and the breadth thereof thirty cubits, and the porch was before them, and the other pillars in the thick beam were before them. Then he made a porch for the throne, where he might judge, even the porch of, porch of judgment, and it was covered with cedar from one side of the floor to the other. And his house where he dwelt had another court within the porch which was of the like work. Solomon made also a house for Pharaoh's daughter, whom he had taken to wife, like unto this porch. And he also made her a house as well. So it took him, as we said here, 13 years, so twice as long. Twice as long to build his entire palace and as we can see that was a grand structure as well and to, we, he also had a um, porch for judgment where he would work and pass his judgments and he also as I said earlier made a house for Pharaoh's daughter which was his wife. So we're kind of getting an insight into his residence. Separate house for his wife. Fair enough. <laughs> um, and all these were of costly stones, of course they were, according to the measures of huge stones, sword with swords, within and without, even from the foundation unto the coping. And so on the outside toward the great court, and the foundation was of costly stones, even great stones, ten, uh, stones of ten cubits and stones of eight cubits. And above were costly stones, after the measured measures of huge stones and cedars. And the great court round about was with three rows of huge stones and a row of cedar beams, both for the inner court of the house of the Lord and for the porch of the house. So as we can see here, the word costly regularly appears like... <laughs> We get it. So there's a repetition of the costly nature of these materials. He spared no expense. I mean, we didn't hear lavishly covered with gold in his palace, um, but he still spent a great deal of money on his own palace. Spared no expense on his palace. And King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram out of Tyre. He was a widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali, and his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass, and he was filled with wisdom and understanding, and cunning to work all work in brass. And he came to King Solomon and brought all his work. So he um, hired someone to do the uh, bronze work needed for the temple. He wasn't the king of Sire, but a widow's son from the tribe of Naphtali, and he was really skilled at bronzing. 
and it looked like he there was no one um, in the area who was as good as this guy so he was expert bronzer so no average Joe would do for Solomon he brought in someone from a far land to do the work he cast two pillars of brass of 18 cubits high apiece, and a line of 12 cubits did encompass either of them about. And he made two chap chapiteers, chapiteers, chapiteers of molten brass to set up upon the tops of the pillars. The height of one chapiter was five cubits, and the height of the other chapiter was five cubits. And nets of checker work and wreaths of chain work for the chapiters were upon the top of the pillars, seven for the one chapter. And seven for the other chapter. So chapter. <laughs> and he made the pillars in two rows round about upon one network to cover the chapters that were upon the top with pomegranates, and so did he for the other chapter. Uh, pomegranates, by the way, I learned from the video I watched yesterday that just stuck out at me that pomegranates were often used because they're a symbol of abundance because there are so many seeds inside pomegranates. Um, so it was good I watched that video, it was very informative, excellent. Um, and the chapters that were upon the top of the pillars were of lily work on the porch, four cubits. And the chapters upon the two pillars had pomegranates also above, over against the belly, which was by the network. And the pomegranates were two hundred in rows round about upon the other chapter. And he set up the pillars in the porch of the temple, and he set up the right pillar and called the name thereof Jackin, and he set up the left pillar and called the name thereof Boaz. And upon the top of the pillars was lily work, so was the work of the pillars finished. So, he wanted two bronze pillars. Oh, wow. And each was really ornate. They've cast bronze on top of them as well. And they were so elaborate and ornate, he gave them names. <laughs> um, I think that's kind of cute. Solomon named the pillars. So one was called Jackin, and the other was Boaz. Why not? Name, name your pillars, I guess. Um, okay, I'm finding the names of the pillars. This makes more sense now. Alright, so Jackin means he will establish. He will establish. And Boaz means in him is strength. That's really nice. Okay, when, when names have meanings, which they do in the Bible, actually, that's something I want to do. Next time I go around to study, second time around, I'm going to go into much more detail on the names, meaning of names and other words as well. Um, but, you know, I believe with the Bible, there's just so much to unpack, it's impossible to do it first round. And kind of, God feeds us what we're able to consume each time. Which is why it's so important to keep reading it because we're going to learn something new every time we do. And that's the beauty of this book. Incredible. Um, so, anyways, for now, this is this is what I'm getting. So, two really elaborate um, pillars, and as we know, pomegranates. Pomegranates symbolise. Wealth and abundance. So, I mean, how? How did you do that? So he had cast out pillars with patterns and designs in them as well. Wow. They don't make them like that anymore, that's for sure. Okay. And he made molten seed ten cubits from one of the brim to the other in it. It was round all about, and his height was five cubits, and the line of thirty cubits did compass it round about. And under the brim of it round about, there were knops compassing it, ten a cubit, compassing the sea round about. The knops were cast in two rows when it was cast. It stood upon twelve oxen, three looking toward the north, three looking toward the west, three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east. And the sea was set above them, and all the hinder parts were inward. Yeah, I saw that on the video as well. Kind of like oxen all in a circle, um, facing outwards. And it was a hand breadth thick, and the brim thereof was wrought, wrought like the brim of a cup. The flowers of lilies 
and it contained 2,000 vargs. Wow. And he made 10 bases of brass. Four cubits was the length of one base, and four cubits the breadth thereof, and three cubits the height of it. And the work of the bases was on this manner. They had borders, and the borders were between the ledges. And on the borders that were between the ledges were lions, oxen, and cherubims. And upon the ledges there was a base above, and beneath the lions and oxen were certain additions made of thin work. Okay, so he made enormous water basins, and they also had really elaborate decorations. And they were on the backs of 12 oxen. Again, what I love in the video was the 12 oxen could symbolise the 12 tribes of Israel. 12 tribes. And the basin was so big that it held, it contained 2,000 baths. Um, and it was used for the priests to wash themselves. Can you just imagine how enormous that is? Used priests to wash themselves. I'm really glad I watched that video. I know it's the fourth time I'm mentioning it, but um, now as, as I'm reading, it's helping me um, visualize because I already saw it, so I knew. Oh yeah, I remember that bit, and um, it helps me kind of to understand and see everything. It's it's really great, honestly. It really was helpful. And every brace, every base had four brazen wheels and plates of brass, and the four corners thereof had undersetters. Under the laver were undersetters molten at the side of every addition. Okay, so it had they had wheels to cart around. To flood water where needed. E.g. to wash, to, um, to rinse burnt offerings. And the mouth of it within the chap chapiter and above was a cubit, but the mouth thereof was round after the work of the base, a cubit and a half, and also upon the mouth of it were gravings with their borders, four square, not round, and under the borders were four wheels, and the axle trees of the wheels were joined to the base, and the height of a wheel was a cubit and half a cubit. And the work of the wheels was like the work of a chariot wheel. Their axle trees and their naves and their fellows and their spokes were all molten. And there were four undersetters to the four corners of one base, and the undersetters were of, of the very base itself. And in the top of the base was their round compass of half a cubit high. And on the top of the base, the ledges thereof, and the borders thereof, were of the same. From the place of the ledges thereof, and of the borders thereof, he graved cherubims, lions, palm trees, according to the proportions of every one, and additions round about. And after this manner, he made the ten bases, all of them had one casting, one measure, and one size. Then made he ten leaves of brass, one laver contained forty baths, and every laver was four cubits, and upon every one of the ten bases, one laver. And he put five bases on the right side of the house, and five on the left side of the house. And he set the sea on the right side of the house, eastward, over against the south. So these water casts, even though they were on wheels, they were still absolutely enormous, right? It would just imagine the size of them. And, and they were placed on ten water carts as well. So we've got a really elaborate description there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a video I watched yesterday in the description of this video as well because it does show all of this too with the water casts and how they were laid out and what they look like. So if you wanted a bit more background, if you haven't seen it before, then um, you can check that out. And I will not mention it anymore for the rest of this video because <laughs> it has had a lot of recommendation. And here I made the lavers and the shovels and the basins. So here I made an end of doing all the work that he made King Solomon for the house of the Lord. The two pillars and the two poles of the chapters that were on top of the two pillars and the two networks to cover two poles of the chapters which were upon the top of the pillars and 400 pomegranates for the two networks. Even two rolls of pomegranates for one network to cover the two bowls of the chapters that were upon the pillars and the ten bases and ten lavers on the bases 
and one sea and twelve oxen under the sea and the pots and the shovels and the basins and all these vessels which Hiram made to King Solomon for the house of the Lord were of bright brass. In the plain of Jordan did the king cast them in the clay ground between Succoth and Zarthan. And Solomon left all the vessels unweighted because they were exceeding many. Neither was the weight of the brass found out. So um, he tried to summarize, you know, like they did the previous one, they tried to calculate how much gold they used, 45,000 pounds worth. They tried to do the same with brass. <laughs> and he goes, do you know what? Well, there were just so many, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you how much brass was used. Can you just imagine um, unable to determine how much brass was used? Can you just comprehend just how much, how expensive that would have been? I can't even, the temple alone with all that gold, but so much brass that they cannot calculate it. The Lord really did bless him with wealth as well as with wisdom. Because remember he didn't ask for the wealth, it was just given to him because he asked for pure things. Unbelievable. Okay, let's take it to the end. And Solomon made all the vessels that pertained unto the house of the Lord, the altar of gold and the table of gold, whereupon the showbread was. And the candlesticks of pure gold, of course, five on the right side, five on the left, before the oracle, with flowers and the lamps and the tons of gold, and the bowls and the snuffers, and the basins and the spoons, and the censers of pure gold, and the hinges of gold, <laughs> both the doors of the inner house, the most holy place, and for the doors of the house, to which of the temple. So was ended all the work that King Solomon made for the house of the Lord. Solomon brought in the things which David his father had dedicated, even the silver and the gold and the vessels did he put among the treasures of the house of the Lord. Wow. They used gold. Look, even, even hinges were made of gold. The spoons, the bowls, tiny details, just gold. Wow. Furnishings. Oh God. I just had to think back to the brass for a second. You know, they said they couldn't calculate it. How? I wonder how he paid him. Because it's such a different time to how we live now. Like, there's no way you'd just get endless amount of bronze and then I'll just give you a random figure. Um, everything would want to be weighed and calculated. So I'm just I'm curious of how um, this was paid for. Oh, hi. Oh, you've got a little friend visiting today. Hello. Oh, you want to come read the Bible? <laughs> um. Okay, so once everything was in its place, the ready, the temple was ready for its dedication and used in worship. So it's all done. That wasn't too bad, it wasn't too long of a chapter. I think because most of it was description of the building and there wasn't as much to unpack storyline which made it go a bit quicker so that's good not that I would have minded a long chapter of course but I'm just thinking for the sake of editing the video and exporting it that takes a long time so um, another great chapter <laughs> hey hello <laughs> you distracting my video good job it's finished so that people don't want to see this but they can exit out um, <laughs> okay, so I think that's everything that I can think of. An elaborate building. Um, really, really impressive building work. We've got the temple, which is pretty much all gold, and his palace, where you just put bronze everywhere as well. So I can only imagine how elaborate that would have been and what that would have looked like. Like, just wow, you just don't see things like that anymore. Fascinating. Okay, so we have chapter eight tomorrow, and eight is also a long one. Um, there is no more building work, so I don't know what we're gonna talk about tomorrow. Uh, so we'll find out.
join me tomorrow please leave your own takeaways and any comments you've got or if you've got any other sources of information about the temple and the palace I would love to check them out because I am really fascinated with how that uh, came out and maybe the meaning behind some of the things that he used and the materials he used perhaps so yeah okay <laughs> this guy wants some cuddles so I'm going to go cuddle him properly now and I will speak to you tomorrow for chapter 8 have a great day bye Bye.